everyone. So in this video, I will be talk I will briefly talking about anastomosis, specifically pertaining to the blood vessels of the cardiovascular system. Essentially, anastomosis refers to a connection or joining between two things. For example, it can be between blood vessels, as I will be talking about today, or it can be between loops of the intestine. When two or more blood vessels come together, thereby providing alternate routes of blood supply to the body, organs, or tissues, it is called anastomosis. This is important because if one blood vessel becomes blocked or damaged, for example, due to atherosclerosis, which involves the build-up of, build of cholesterol plaque in the walls of the arteries, then the other blood vessel can direct blood to or from the organ or tissue. Essentially, blood vessel anastomoses are alternative pathways through which blood reaches an organ or body tissue. These alternative circulatory pathways could have either multiple arteries or multiple veins. They could also involve the use of low capillary beds or multiple capillary beds. So let's get into more details about these different type of anastomoses. First off, this is what a simple blood flow pathway looks like. You have one artery that carries blood from the heart to the body tissues, which is going to branch into the atrioles that further divide into the capillary beds where gas, nutrients, ETC are exchanged between the blood and the body tissues. And then from there, the venules, which stem from a single vein, are going to carry the blood back to the heart. That said, in terms of the different types of anastomoses, like I mentioned, we have anastomoses that involve multiple arteries. This is referred to as arterial anastomosis. Here, a particular body region receives blood from two or more arteries, as seen in this image. As you can see, multiple arteries converge together, which branch to form atrioles that further branches into capillary beds. And, and the type of anastomosis that involves multiple veins is called venous anastomosis, as I'm sure you already inferred. As seen here, there are two or more veins which converge together receiving blood from venules which initially receives blood from the capillary beds and together these veins are going to carry the blood back to the heart. Another form of anastomosis is the atriovenous anastomosis. Here blood is going to bypass the capillary beds as you can see there is no blood flow here and instead the blood travels directly from the arteries to the veins. This is also referred to as shunts, and it is kind of similar to what happens in fetal circulation when blood flow bypasses the lungs and blood is shunted from the right atrium directly to the left atrium via the foramen or valve. Another alternative pathway I want to mention is the portal system. In the portal system, you have multiple capillary beds, as you can see here. After blood passes through one capillary bed, you get venous or deoxygenated blood, which is indicated by this blue color. And this venous blood is going to be carried in a portal vein to another capillary bed of an organ, for example, the liver, before it is taken to the heart via the vein, as you can see here. So the order of blood flow is from the artery, then to the capillary bed, then to the portal vein, and then to a venous blood-filled capillary bed before it is finally taken to the vein right here. Examples of this would include the hepatic portal system and the apothalamal hypophysal portal system. Lastly, I want to talk about the circle of Willis, also called the cerebral arterial circle. This is an arterial anastomosis, and by that I mean this anastomosis involves the arteries. And it is found around the cytosco of the skull, as you can see right here. It is formed from multiple arteries, which include the posterior cerebral artery, the anterior cerebral artery, the posterior communicating artery, the anterior com communicating artery, as well as the internal carotid arteries. It supplies the majority of the cerebrum with oxygenated blood, and it equalizes blood pressure in the brain. Again, it is important because it provides alternate pathways of blood flow. Thus, if one blood vessel becomes blocked, the brain still has access to blood supply. 
Alright, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And if you want, you can share the video with anyone you think might benefit from it. Thanks for watching.